in this video, I am going to attempt to share with you my method of creating a correct sentence structure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a plain English fiction babble sentence that was taken from a legalese document and I'm going to show you the fictitious conveyance of grammar, the modification within that sentence and then I'm going to show you how to correct it, how I would correct it, translating it into a correct sentence structure, positioning the facts with the correct positional sequencing, placement of the verb, and we're going to go through all that stuff. I have done this multiple, multiple times on this YouTube channel. You can find my correct sentence structure playlist. I'm pretty sure there's like 70-ish videos on there that already talk about this from different angles. But today I'm going to show it to you from a very fresh angle so that perhaps those of you out there that are curious as to when I say things like, well, if you're going to tell someone else they're using a fictitious conveyance of grammar, you yourself must know how to create correct grammar. And not only that, you have to be able to teach it to the other contract party that you're criticizing. If you have a problem, you have to have a solution. Rule one, rule equal. So first off, there's going to be some language in this document, or I mean in this sentence, that I'm not going to directly translate into correct sentence structure because from my position, my viewpoint, I don't use certain particular fiction terms. For example, the terminology of judge. I know a while back in the quantum grammar uh, sector, domain, there's a lot of people arguing about who's a judge, who's not a judge. You know, some individuals were selling judgeships for thousands of dollars. Some individuals were saying, oh, it takes 15 years of study to become a federal judge or a federal postal judge or whatever word they used. And then, you know, in the next breath, they're talking about some kid that's 15 years old who walked into court being a federal judge. So they must have been studying since they were one years old, right? Anyways, so I don't use the word judge, judicial, legal, law. I don't use any of those words. The word that I use for the word judge is document, contract, court, authority. And I do have my document, contract, postal vessel, court, venue claim for that position. Um, let me pull out my briefcase here. This is my grammar auditor document contract court authority. Okay? And this gives closure to all those performances uh, that I do with uh, site performance, writ performance, bank values, banking, uh, position, peace, neutrality, all that stuff, forensic methods. Um, rule one, rule equal. All the things necessary to do the performances that I'm about to do here or performances that I can do uh, within foreign vessels and dry dock or wherever I choose to go to use this. Um, and while we're here, you know, I got the fate rip volition claim. I got the my port authority claim because I am port authority. Uh, and before someone says, how could you be Port Authority? Well, I have a port of sensation, the port of senses, the docking point where data comes into my construct, my comprehension, my first-hand knowledge. So that is a port. The port is my live life claim. Live life claim number is the number of, of that port of sensation. So yes, I am a Port Authority. There's no one else on this earth or in the cosmos that can claim 
to be authority of my port. I'd like to see them try. Uh, and then we have the language tutor claim, of course. Um, domicile contract. Um, what else here? And, of course, the most important document, my live life claim document, where if you're going to make use correct sentence structure in any way, shape, or form, you must have a correct claim of the live life and if you want to be the sole authority of your live life claim, then your name and your name only should be in the copyright copy claim section of that live life claim. Otherwise, if it's not, if there's another name down there with copyright copy claim, then your live life ain't yours. So now that I've established jurisdiction, i.e. authority, let's get on to the meat of the matter. So here you see the sentence that we're going to be looking at. And for this court order of this year, 1492, is with the authorization by this judge, Jason M. Glass. Now when you're looking at this, there are actually probably some individuals out there on earth somewhere who will think this is correct sentence structure, but it is not. Here are some red flags for you. The sentence starts with a conjunction. Every correct sentence structure must start with a cause position. All right, there are four positionals in correct sentence structure. And again, if you want closure on this, you can either look at the mini class playlist or the correct sentence structure playlist. So here we go. There are four positionals, for, of, with, and by. For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. Every sentence must start with a cause. There is one cause per sentence, one authority per sentence. Cause comes at the beginning, authority comes at the end. So that's one red flag. Another red flag would be this, Jason M. Glass. That is not a correct abbreviation or correct name. So what is going on in this sentence? How is this sentence a fictitious conveyance of grammar? Well, for one thing, the and has not been positioned nor is it serving its intended function of conjunction because there are two conjunctions, and and or. You can see the parts of speech behind me. Zero is conjunction, one is adverb, two verb, uh, three adjective, four pronoun, five positional, six lodial, seven fact, eight past tense, nine future tense. So the most efficient and effective way to syntax a sentence, to show the modification in a sentence, without making too many mistakes is to go backwards, start at the end. The first question you ask yourself, is the word tangible or is the word non-tangible? Meaning tangible contract, non-tangible contract, fact-based or non-fact-based. Is the word based on a fact or is it not based upon a fact? Because there are no facts here. This is all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, nonsense. So glass, because using rule one, rule equal, balance of the honor and the grace, is a name. If you're reading this, you, and you're watching my YouTube channel, and you're aware of what my name is, then you can reasonably guess, with the balance of the honor and the grace, that that is a name. Names are tangible contract. So we know that that's a tangible contract word. And we know that word groups or sentences will only end on verbs or pronouns. Twos or fours. And the reason why is they would never end on a one or a three because ones and threes, adverbs and adjectives, are modifiers. There's nothing left to modify, so therefore it would not end on a one or a three, only a two or a four. So in this case, it's going to be a pronoun, a four. Reason being, there's a break in the continuance of the evidence right before it with that period. 
that incorrect abbreviation. So M, which again, we can view through the bounds of honor and grace, we can reasonably guess is part of a name, tangible contract. Jason is also tangible contract. And now we have another break in the continuance of the evidence. So M would also be a pronoun and Jason would be tangible contract adjective, which is coloring M into a pronoun. Now we can start over again, going backwards, judge. Well, I have a tangible contract with what a judge is. So that's tangible contract. This is non-tangible contract. By is non-tangible contract. Authorization is tangible contract. The is non-tangible contract. So now we have enough information to move in our banking of syntax values. Judge would be a verb being modified by adverb this. Now a neat little mechanic that you can use for educational, i.e. knowledge cultivation purposes, is when you're going backwards and you can certify that you've hit an adverb, you can now take that away and continue syntaxing as if it wasn't even there. Because an adverb, although it is not in and of itself a break in the continuance of the evidence, it acts as though it is a break in the continuance of the evidence. So with that in mind, by is non-tangible contract, but it is preceded by tangible contract authorization. So by would be a pronoun being colored by adjective authorization, which is being modified by non-tangible contract adverb the. And then the same situation that I just mentioned. If you like, when you can certify that you've hit that adverb, you can now take that away and continue syntaxing. What are we left with? We're left with a break in the continuance of the evidence, the comma, and then tangible contract is a non-tangible contract with. So it's sort of the same scenario as authorization by. So with is going to be a pronoun and is is going to be an adjective. Now we have 1492, which is standing by itself which would be a pronoun breaking the continuance of the evidence with this comma now we have year which is tangible contract verb being modified by non-tangible contract is or this and then non-tangible contract of which is a pronoun which is being colored by a compound adjective court order this is an adverb, which is modifying uh, court order into an adjective. Remember, folks, adverbs modify either adjectives or verbs. Adjectives modify other adjectives or pronouns. For is non-tangible contract verb, and and is non-tangible contract adverb, because as I stated at the beginning, and is a conjunction in correct sentence structure. However, in this scenario, it is not performing as a conjunction. If, for example, it would say something like this, uh, for and for this court order, then that would change the syntax of what's going on here. Because now, if that's the case now, and is performing as a conjunction. And it would be a bridge, a neutral bridge between these two non-tangible contract pronouns. And we know nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. And remember, when I said you go backwards, if you can certify that you've hit an adverb, you can take that away. And there's your evidence for my syntax values for for and for. Because it's basically two standalone pronouns being connected by this and here. Now, how am I going to translate that into a correct sentence structure?
let me put it back to the way it was at the beginning here. Okay. I'm going to show you what it would be. And then I'm going to reverse engineer it. For this claimant's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the authorization with the continuous performance of this court contract with the year 1492 of the nativity start with this correct sentence structure communication policy syntax grammar directive by this document contract court authority Jason Matthew Glass. So the way we translate it is, look at this sentence. What is the claim being made here? If you had to sum it up into one word, what is being conveyed in that sentence? What sort of a claim is it? To me, it looks like it is an authorization claim. It's a claim of authorization, and that particular authorization is given a date. Okay? So that's the main claim. So if you look down here, in my claim, you can see that I say that. I say, with this claim of the authorization. So I have established that it is an authorization claim. So now let's break it down even further, as David Wynn Miller would say, and graft it. As I said at the beginning, each correct sentence structure communication must start with a cause. And the positional, out of those four positionals that I mentioned, that serves that function is four. With correct sentence structure, one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. So the cause of the sentence is the claimant's knowledge. I am the claimant. It's my knowledge. That's the cause. That's what's causing this sentence. Now, where does the knowledge come from? Where do claims come from? I'll simply say it this way, for this claimant sensation of the cognition is with this correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar claim of the facts with the knowledge by this claimant, period. And then backwards, that would be for this claimant of the knowledge is with the facts of this correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar claim with the cognition by this claimant sensation period. So what I've just told you in correct sentence structure is that my knowledge comes from my cognition, my understanding of my sensations. Data comes into my port of sensation of which I am the port authority. They dock there. I assimilate them. I cognize them. And then I transship those things out as correct sentence structure claims. I've just given you closure as to where my knowledge comes from. Thus, for this claimant's knowledge, that is the cause of the sentence. What is the claimant's knowledge concerned with? Of, the positional of, serves the function of concern. Or, as Colin David Ivan Colin Miller used to say, consequence. Concern, uh, from my humble position as a tutor of over five years teaching hundreds of people all over the earth, concern definitely covers more ground and is more inclusive than consequence. Besides the fact that the word consequence has a particle of negation in it, in the SE before the Q. But that's neither here nor there. This is for knowledge cultivation purposes. So we have the cause, which is claims knowledge, and then we have the concern, which is the facts. So when you create a correct sense structure, you must establish the geometric level playing field of correct communication. You need two points with which to draw a straight line. So the two position lodial fact phrases that you see here that's highlight, that are highlighted right there serve that function. So you have, for this claimant's knowledge, and you can draw that line to, of the facts. Now you've established that geometric level playing field. Now you can put your movement in it. Now you can move along that straight line, that correct line. 
okay? Because you've established it. You as the authority, or me as the authority, because I'm the claimant here. Now we can put our movement in. We can move the cause and the concern into the possessive and so on and so forth down the line. So our verb is singular is. There is only, well, two verbs in correct sentence structure, but it's basically one verb. But it's is, which serves the function of singularity, and then are, which is the form of is, but it's plural. And that is tangible contract. Because try to do anything in life without thinking. So here we go. Now we can move into the possessive. With is the positional that serves the function of possessive. With the claim. What is the claim possessing? The facts. It's also possessing the authorization. What is the claim concerned with? The authorization. It's an authorization claim. What is possessing this authorization? The continuous performance. It means it's a perpetual performance. We could say with the perpetuity as well, if we would want to. And the way you would do that, ladies and gentlemen, when you're looking for positive performance facts to add to your dictionary and add to your contracts, you would use a thesaurus. And if you have a negative performance word, um, then you would look that word up in the thesaurus and look up positive performance synonyms and then you would have to give closure to those synonyms using correct sentence structure in your dictionary. So we have, in this uh, instance, I chose the compound fact continuous performance. And also, just a little tidbit, side tidbit, you see a hyphen between continuous and performance there and a hyphen between claimants and knowledge. That hyphen in correct sentence structure performs the function of connecting two sevens together to form one seven. So if I was to syntax for this claimant's knowledge, that would be five, six, seven. Of the facts, five, six, seven. Is would be two with the claim. Five, six, seven. Of the authorization, five, six, seven. With the continuous performance, five, six, seven, so on and so forth. So that is what a compound fact is. And as you can see, I also underline it to show that what is being underlined is to be taken as a whole so that it does not interfere with any positional sequencing or anything like that. And more about that in a little bit. So what is the continuous performance concerned with? It's concerned with this court contract of this court contract. Now you see this compound fact. There are three separate sevens which have been brought together by two hyphens to form one seven. Why is the word contract hyphenated? Well, folks, if you look very closely here, you will see a particle of negation in the word contract if there were no hyphen in there. Contra is a particle of negation. One zero zeroes out the whole multiplication problem, as Colin David Ivan Colin Miller once said. So based upon that context, I salvaged the word contract to make sure that there were no particles of negation in it no modification in it. And of course, that salvage is open source. Uh, no one challenged it. And so it has standing. And you're more than welcome to use it if you'd like. You do not need my permission, folks. It's open source. What is possessing the court contract? The year, 1492. Now you see this word year with the tilde in front of it. In correct sentence structure, I use the tilde to designate or credential location. A year is a location as opposed to a century or a month or a day. Hence, year is a location. The number 1492 is also a location. 1492 as opposed to 2001. So those are two locations. And commas in correct sentence structure, ladies and gentlemen, Simply group facts. They group sevens together. So what is the year 1492 concerned with? The nativity start, meaning it's the beginning of something. Okay? 
the beginning of the court contract. What is possessing the nativity start? The correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, directive. Okay? So you see here an abbreviation. CSS, CPSG. I give closure to what that abbreviation is here. I write it out. So technically, if I were to keep on going with a document, contract, post of court venue, since I've given closure to the abbreviation here, I can use that abbreviation rather than write out correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar every time. So that, that's the purpose of that. And then the authority. What is the authority of this grammar directive? Oh, and by the way, directive, you see here, um, DI hyphen R-E-C-T-I-V-E. DI basically means source, original. And then rect is just like a straight line. And then I-V-E is contract. So it's the original geometric level playing field. Straight, rect, straight. And then who is the authority of that? The Document Contract Court Authority, DCTCA, Jason hyphen Matthew colon space glass. Now you see here, I have underlined this name. That means it's to be taken as a whole so that this colon does not interfere with the positional sequencing you see. You see four of, is, with, of, with, of, with, of, with, by. It does not interfere with that because I've underlined it because if you were to syntax this sentence, by is a five, this is six, document contract court authority would be seven, and then you see this forward slash, which is not underlined, that is a symbol, a hieroglyph, to represent the conjunction and. So then this would be zero. This forward slash would be zero. And then DCTCA, which is a correct abbreviation, would also be a seven. And then this comma, as I said up earlier, commas group together facts. And Jason Knife and Matthew Colon Glass is a fact. So then this would be syntaxed as a seven. So the complete syntax of this particular part would be five, six, seven, zero, seven, comma, space, seven. So we have five, six, sevens all the way down the line. And to read that backwards would be for this document contract court authority, Jason Matthew Glass of this correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar directive is with the nativity start of the year 1492 with this court contract of the continuous performance with the authorization of this claim with the facts by the claimant's knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope it has brought you some closures that you heretofore may not have possessed. I'm sure I didn't cover every single thing because this was kind of a fast lesson. If you were to apply for a workshop with me and then I accept you as a student and you accept me as a tutor, it of course would be much more detailed, much more laid out, and we would go as fast or slow as you were as you possess the capacity to go. I would literally be your guide and show you these closures. Because again, if you're going to tell someone that they're performing with a fictitious conveyance of grammar, you yourself, for the balance of rule one, uh, balance of honor and grace and the performance maintenance of rule one, rule equal, must know how to do a correct grammar performance and also be able to teach the other contract party, or at least be willing to teach. They may not be willing to hear, but you have to be willing to teach it and be capable of doing that. 
If you do not possess that capacity to do that type of thing under duress, I would highly, highly caution you not to get involved in those dangerous scenarios because the safety of the vessel and yourself is the most important thing. And, well, that about does it. That wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.